There are a number of reasons why I'm standing up here today. Um, firstly, I think Dan probably caught me in a moment of weakness, and those of you that know him know how very persuasive he can be. Obviously, when I emailed him on uh, at the beginning of the week and told him I had a black eye, and <laughs> did he still want me to stand up in front of um, in front of all of you? He said, "Yes, that's fine. That's fine." Um, <clears throat> Or maybe it was because when we were talking, he saw me trip over my soapbox when we got up from a conversation talking about education um, and how, as he's rightly said, I, I think there are a number of areas where we are potentially failing our, failing our children. Very emotional comment from, from someone there um, via email. The first thing I do want to talk about was access to education, um, which, is, which is interesting because bearing in mind the, uh, the pedigree and experience um, of some of the education professions that are in the room, I feel slightly underqualified to be, uh, to be talking about that. Um, however, um, one, of the, one of the points that, that Dan made, and, and it's something that he and I discuss quite a lot, is that, is that um, a great deal of us do work in, in, in very privileged environments, although we don't necessarily always appreciate that. Certainly, the office building that I work in, um, there, there's, there are very few people in that building, possibly with the exception of the catering staff um, and the cleaning staff, who earn less than the national average wage. And yet, half a mile down the road in the London borough of Tower Hamlets, 52% of the children live below the poverty line. Um, I was having a conversation with my father about this the other day and, and he said, well, you know, I'm sure you, you, you can do lots in that community because the children there will be really interested in, in, in technology and computers because they will have laptops and want to make them work. And I said, no, they don't all have laptops at all. It's, that's, very far, um, that's very far from the case. Um, I, I, did, uh, I had the privilege last year of going to uh, um, uh, a session with Nicholas Negroponte, um, who is the the founder of the One Laptop Per Child initiative, um, where he, he set out to equip millions of the world's poorest children with the, uh, the $100 laptop. I don't know whether any of you are familiar with, with, um, with his initiative. Um, so far, uh, he's got two million of these laptops out there, and obviously these are in, in, in the developing countries of the world rather than countries like, um, like the UK or, or the US, but I think the, the principles are, are, are the same. Um, his foundation believed that learning is the basis for full human, social, economic, and democratic development. And having listened to him, he's an incredibly inspiring person. If you ever get the opportunity to hear him speak, you should, you should definitely, um, definitely do that. So I, I think that now his greatest legacy to the world is not that he founded the, uh, the Media Lab at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It's not that he founded Wired Magazine. It's that he now has children in the world who are teaching their parents how to read and write because they have this, because they have this infrastructure um, of, uh, of laptops. Um, it's initiatives like that and the one that we've come to talk about today um, which, uh, which make a difference. Um, turning to the issue of CSR, I think um, there, there, there's potentially a great deal of cynicism around the whole CSR um, agenda. Um, there are suggestions that it is done more as a, a, a box-ticking exercise um, because it's something that, certainly in the environment that I work in, it's something that increasingly clients are, are um, very aware of. Any kind of pitch process you go through, you have to put in a great deal about what your, um, what your CSR initiatives are. Um, and uh, I kind of work on the basis that I don't actually mind the reasons why people are doing these things as long as they are doing them. The fact, that, the fact that people are getting involved in, um, in some of these programs across a great, um, a, a great spectrum of things. We, we, do, um, we do pro bono work for the big issue. And um, we, so we have a big issue vendor. Um, every six months we have a different vendor. They um, sell the big issue in our, in our staff reception um, every Wednesday. So we get collared on the way in. And, um, but all of those guys have, have um, spent time in our organisation. One of them, the one that's just spent the, uh, the most recent six months with us, um, my, my, uh, my SQL DBA has actually taught him how to be a SQL DBA, so he now has some career prospects. Um, and that's the kind of thing that just makes people feel very good about themselves and what they're, what they're adding back into the community. Um, Obviously, I'm not, I'm not here as an advertisement for how wonderful Simmons & Simmons is and, and how altruistic we are, um, but I do think there are a couple of things that, that, that we're doing that, that demonstrate um, what a difference can be made and that, and that how there are huge numbers of people who do want to help, who want to put something back, 
um, who want to give up their time. As, as Dan said, I know we're all very busy, but actually you, you, can, you can find the time for these kinds of, um, kinds of causes. Um, so for a number of years we've worked with an organisation called TWIST um, where um, we, we have 15-year-olds uh, from the London Borough of Tower Hamlets who are just on the, on the verge of being excluded from school and, and their, you know, their lives are potentially going to go in one direction or another. Um, and we spend time with them, we give them work experience, we give them mentoring, um, and um, we see a huge difference in all of these, in all of these pupils who actually realise that, that there is an alternative for them. Um, these are, uh, are children and, and young people who've never actually been further than a mile's radius away from their house. You know, they go between house and school and, and, um, and hang out in parks, in gangs, and... and um, uh, there was one defining moment in the programme I remember when um, our, our then senior partner was very involved with these with these pupils, and um, he uh, he said to them, um, "So what?" Uh, he said to one of them, "So what? What do you want to do when you're when you're older?" Then, and he just looked him in the eye and said, "I want your job," <laughs> which was um, it, it's good to have that kind of ambition um, and to actually see it grow in the in these pupils as well. Um, so obviously the question of social mobility is also high on the CSR agenda um, as well. And again, um, whether you see it as a cynical box ticking exercise or whether you see it as something that actually makes a difference, there's no doubt about the fact that um, we have a number of students that, we, that we've sponsored through university, but we, also, we, we have also offered training contracts to a number of people that we've sponsored as well. So traditionally firms like Simmons have, have taken on um, graduates from the, uh, the, the, the Red Brick Universities, the ones that you would expect. But, but what we actually we understand is that um, one of the keys to a success, successful organisation is obviously having that, having that diver, diverse workforce, um, diversity of thought, and that talent exists everywhere that you're prepared to look for it. Um, so you'll have seen some of the statistics that Dan has presented uh, regarding the numbers of young people who are falling out of both the education and the employment system. Um, and just to bring this back down to a, a, a sort of a, a more micro and personal perspective, um, you know, I worry about the future of my son. He's, he's nine years old. And um, I already wonder what the world is going to be like when he's a teenager. He has a 15-year-old babysitter who looks after him. Um, and... Uh, she is just about to start in the sixth form. She doesn't know what she wants to do. But I, I, I just remember that when I was uh, a teenager thinking about what I wanted to do, there was more choice, there was more opportunity, there was less pressure, there was less competition. Um, and uh, aside from anything else, uh, Charlie declared to me the other day he didn't need to work hard at school. Uh, he didn't need to get a job to earn money because I've got money and he's going to live with me forever. So, um, if nothing else, I'm very much hoping that supporting initiatives like this uh, um, will save me from that, from that rather uncertain future. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I'd just like to say I, that I'm a very firm believer in the concept of lifelong learning. Um, and I believe that if we ever stop learning things from our environment, from our experiences, or from other people, then that will be a very sad day. Thank you.